Welcome to this month's reflection, the month of October, and uh, isn't the year flying by? Once again, I'm really pleased to be able to share this time with you and uh, really appreciate the fact that you're there um, listening and uh, sharing with me in this time together. I put a title to this week's, re this month's reflection, uh, Community, a sense of belonging, a sense of belonging. I hope you've experienced a sense of belonging in community. I'm aware of a quote which states that the most important things in life aren't things. To me, the most important thing is relationships. And I suspect that's what the quote is getting at. Relationships with a spouse or a partner, with family or friends, relationships in a congregation, in sporting clubs, in community organisations, our relationships at work, our relationships in school. Some relationships last a lifetime and some are for a short period of time. They can all be important and some are vital to our sense of well-being. Some people just know us inside out our relationship with God is also very important. In my time as a full-time minister of the Word, I am acutely aware that relationships are at the heart of ministry. This is one of the big things I will miss in ministry when I retire on the 31st of December this year. Relationships are also, of course, at the heart of community. In January, we moved into our home, into our own home. We had always lived in church houses. We've been slowly building relationships with our neighbours who are next door on either side of us and our neighbours who are over the road. And we're starting to feel like we belong in this community in our part, our section of this suburban street in Melbourne. And we've just returned from visiting Lynn's family in Canberra. Her sister celebrated her 60th birthday. And we saw family that we'd not seen for some time. We were able to reconnect, reminisce, and spend some time together. And it was that though we had not been apart. It's also important to spend time with God in order to maintain a strong, and vibrant relationship with God. We can do that through prayer, through Bible reading, through services of worship, through walking in a garden or in the bush, through sit sitting quietly and listening, and through meditation. Some people are able to spend time with God in the car as they're driving some through music. Being part of a congregation, or I could say being part of a faith community, is so important for me, and I'm sure that is true for many of you. Some of the things that a faith community, a congregation does for me, is to make me feel welcome and accepted. It provides for me a sense of belonging, and I can contribute. I can use my gifts, my skills, and I can affirm, support, and encourage others to be themselves and use their gifts as well. I can make a contribution. But it leads me to a, what I think is a very important question. An important question to consider and it's important for a, for a congregation to consider, what sort of community do we want to be? That's the question. What sort of community do we want to be? I hope that we can be a community that notices people. I hope we notice those who are new or visiting and that we're prepared to step out of our comfort zone to reach out and make them feel welcome and comfortable being among us. That's what I would hope for a congregation. And if you're uncertain about approaching someone you, you do not know, 
you can always take a friend with you. But I also hope that we notice those who are sick or struggling in some way and that we can offer appropriate care and support. I hope we notice that we're all different and yet we can truly celebrate our diversity and grow our unity. I hope we notice the gifts and talents that others bring and we can encourage their use. I hope we notice that we can always make room for one more at our table. And I hope we notice the one quietly standing on their own. I hope we also notice those who might need a hand with their task. So let's have eyes that the see the people around us. Let's have eyes that notice people. Let's have eyes just as Jesus did, because Jesus n noticed people. He saw people. He saw people that others didn't see. He saw those who were invisible. And I also sincerely hope that we notice that God is in our midst. God is there in our relating with others, in our serving, in our worship, and in our shared life together. As we intentionally notice people and respond appropriately, we are living together in community. Jesus called disciples to journey with him and to learn from him. Jesus established a community around himself. The Spirit of God is indeed with us as we come together as a congregation, as a community of Jesus' followers. If you belong to a community of faith, a congregation, I hope you feel that you belong and I hope you feel that you can contribute in some way to the shared life of the community that you belong to. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for the gift of community. We give thanks for brothers and sisters in Christ, people who encourage us, care for us, support us. And in that sense of community, Lord, we experience your presence. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love and acceptance of us. Help us to be a welcoming and accepting community. Lord God, give us the eyes to see the people around us. Not just our friends, but to see everyone who's around us, even those who are invisible to some. Give us eyes to notice the little things, those who might need a special um, piece of reassurance, a word of care, a message of hope. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for sharing this time with me and I look forward to being back in November, first Thursday of November, to share with you again. May God bless you. Amen.